Hi, I'm Lukas. I'm a software developer, but I also like to play music sometimes. And I want to tell you about a program I found a while ago, which is uh, Lillipond, a musical typesetter, which means it turns some kind of uh, code description of the music into a beautiful score, which you can see down there, hopefully, and uh, all the other scores are at the top of the slide, so uh, easier to see. And it's obviously free software, and the input is mostly just plain text, so you can put it in a Git repository if you want, so that's already nice. But this is not the best example of good Lillipond code, so let's just skip to the next slide, which shows something easier. Uh, so a very simple note you make by really just putting the name of the note, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, or A, in the file, and then you have one note. And if you learn Do, Re, Mi in school instead of uh, C, D, E, then you'll have to learn these names, but like, they're in alphabetical order. And <laughs> you usually use relative mode, which just means that even though this A and this A are the same in the source code. This is an A in this octave and not down here or up here because this is the one closest to the previous note. So um, because that's most of the time the melody doesn't jump around that much. So you can just stay in the same octave like that. And to modify the duration of a note, you put a number after it. For example, oh, I have to walk a lot. This is a 16th note. And to mark that, you have to put a 16 after the note name. Or here we have a dotted quarter note, which means it's 50% longer than a normal quarter note. And you, do, you make it dotted by literally putting an ASCII dot after the number four. So there's kind of some cute ASCII art in there. Usually it doesn't get out of control too much. It's just kind of nice. If you do need to change the octave, if the relative mode isn't enough for you, um, so exa for example here, uh, the C that will be closest to the G is the one up here. And we actually want the C down here. Uh, so to go down by one octave, we put a comma after the note name. And to jump back up to this G afterwards, we put an apostrophe, which kind of looks like a comma, except at the top of the line instead of the bottom. So it's, like, it's not uh, prose text. Forget what these characters usually mean. Just uh, uh, see what they look like, I guess. And that's the input syntax. And if you need to uh, modify the pitch a bit more, so in music you can have uh, uh, change the pitch by a semitone. So for example, between an E and a D, there would be, there's a note called either E flat or D sharp, uh, which you write by putting this uh, flat sign before the note. And you write that in Lillipond by, instead of E writing S. And to make it a sharp note, you would write a Fis instead of F. So that is, I think in the Lillipond documentation, they saw, say it's the Dutch notation. It also happens to be the German notation. You can configure it to uh, also accept literally F uh, E sharp or F flat. No, that was the wrong way around. Um, e flat or F sharp in the input file, that just means no one else will be, uh, well, they will be able to read your file, but they will be a bit confused because it's not conventional. So perhaps stick to S and FIS instead. But what's important here is that um, so here, for example, this is actually a fist, but it doesn't have a sharp sign directly in front of the note because that's actually part of the key signature over here. But you still write a fist in the score or an F sharp. Uh, so what you put in the input file is kind of the logical meaning of the music. And then it's Lillipond's job to figure out, do we actually need a um, sharp sign or a flat sign in front of the note? Or do we not need it because it's part of the key signature? Or do we actually need a natural because this is supposed to be an F, but we have an F sharp in the key signature, so we need to cancel that with this natural sign. And if it gets more complicated, um, like if there was another F sharp in this bar, would you need to put a sharp again in front of it, even though it's part of the key signature? Or would that not be necessary? And that actually varies by style, by century, by instrument. And Lillipond supports different variations there in case you want to reproduce the conventions of historical scores from different eras, whatever you want. It's kind of flexible like that. And this is not supposed to be a full introduction to Lillipond, obviously, so we'll skip ahead a bit here. But speaking of flexible software, uh, you can also do fun things like this. So when Lillipond generates the score as a PDF, it embeds these special fonts, which have names like Feta and Emmentaler, and it's all named after Jesus. I don't know why. 
But if you tweak the font size and make the font size of the node head uh, four units larger, then you actually get a larger node head. Or you can set the color, which makes the node heads, uh, I should have chosen a different color, but this is dark red, just believe me, instead of black. And you can tell it, I would like this tie, uh, so by default, it would put it downwards like here, but I would like it to go up instead, and now it goes up. Or I can directly modify the control points of the Bezier curve, so a quadratic one. <laughs> And I'm leaving the first one and the last one as they are so that the, it still starts and ends at the right point, but uh, adding these offsets to the points in between so it makes this kind of loop, looping shape, um, which is obviously stupid here, but if you like have a long kind of descending musical sequence and you want a long uh, slur over it, Lily Pong by itself could only do a single curve like this. And if you want a kind of S or Z shaped curve because you think that looks nicer, uh, you can do that um, because Lillipond lets you go pretty deep into its internals. And does anyone recognize this syntax here from the control points? Does that look familiar to anyone? Yes, this uh, Lillipond has a scheme interpreter built into it, which is a dialect of Lisp. And so with this hash sign here, it actually switches the parser into scheme mode. And we can say that the color of the stem should be defined not by some constant, but instead by this uh, function, which takes a graphical object and gets its direction property. And if that is up, then we return red and otherwise we return blue. So now we have stems that point uh, that are blue if they point down and red if they point up. Uh, because why not? Perhaps you need that for teaching music or something. And it turns out this is just a really great way to nerd snipe yourself. Like I, when I put these slides together, I wasted like 90 minutes, I think, on uh, this. This is the smallest font size I could get out of later. It's not enough to actually fit it on the slide. Uh, but, oh, it's actually not showing, but there's an oct command somewhere in here to octavate a score. And the end result is that I only had to write the lower line here. And the upper line was automatically duplicated by Lily Pond and Doing the right thing, for example, this tie has to be copied to the upper node, but this formata should not be copied because we don't want two on top of each other. So you have to uh, decide with this predicate here, do you want to copy each articulation or not? And uh, that's kind of one of the things I really like about Lillipond that you can um, have these different things. You can just at the end of a long day when you don't have the mental capacity for much else, you can sit down and just transcribe some score you have lying around, which has been in the public domain for 100 years. And uh, that's pretty mechanical, simple work. But if you feel up to more, you can also start doing this uh, scheme programming and completely bend the score to your will and do whatever you want with it. And I really enjoy this mixture. And <laughs> if you want to find out more, there's some links here. Uh, I should have mentioned at the beginning that this was a link to the slides, but uh, just talk to me if you want any of these links. Thank you.